Thank you, uh, ladies, for joining me in this discussion. Uh, so I think I'll uh, get uh, right to the topic. The topic of discussion. I'll reiterate once again. The topic is that are there any invisible barriers for women to move to leadership position, uh, to leadership roles? And uh, I think I'm just going to start. Uh, you know, uh, with just putting out it, putting this out there that you know it's a fact that with more and more and more women are getting educated, they're getting access to schools and college education, they're joining workforces, they're acing at the professional level. But uh, you know, it's also a fact that at the macro level what one sees is that the representation of women at the management level or at the board level is still does not reflect the number of women who are joining the workforce but what we have here is a group of amazing lawyers with us who are working at the management level and heading their domains at their respective workplaces in different capacities and each of them have their own unique journey to the level that they have reached and that they're occupying today so uh, what i want to do today is uh, not look at it from a macro level but look at it from a micro level from a personal level i want uh, to hear from each of them today that you know what's their personal take on this question and when i mean uh, 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 personal take what i mean is that you know were there any invisible barriers that they faced as women while they were moving to a leadership role in you know in the respective uh, places that they are they, that they are today and uh, we are going to listen to their story from the perspective of how they navigated their workplace what were the barriers uh, if there are any mindset shifts that they could that they made support system uh, that they developed to you know reach where they are and i think i'm going to open uh, the floor with by inviting monica uh, who is the uh, gm legal for leela palaces hotels and resorts and uh, monica uh, starting with you uh, and uh, your personal take on this question yes uh, hi everyone now uh, you know this is so real that there are invisible barriers and of course i will take you through my personal journey which is full of fraught with challenges and uh, i have overcome uh, of course uh, you know when we come out of our uh, you know uh, school we are not taught that this is what we are going to face but deep within there is there are these underlying forces which we have to tackle as we reach the mid level so initially of course the phase can be very smooth because we are all learning this is a phase where you know we we are not really in a power struggle but yes once you reach the mid level and you are you know rising up and to the next level then you start seeing that yes there are these invisible barriers and i think uh, uh in my personal journey uh it has been immensely uh, uh you know uh, seen that i have uh, immense support not only from my mentors who have been there for in each stage there have been uh, immense support from the family and of course the self confidence that you know that needs to be there uh, every step of the way because you have to take up the challenge every step of the way because you know you our society is male dominated and in each uh, uh, struggle whether it is in your uh, law firm or whether it is in your corporate world it is there so it is very real and you have to prove yourself continue to prove yourself with perseverance with patience and yes the support becomes hugely important and uh, uh, i think um, that's where we uh, and that's the reason why you know i faced um, Uh, right from when i started my career from the law firm to the corporate world i need to thank my mentors and the support that i got from and of course the blessing i must say there are a lot of blessings and a bit of i would say good luck that i got <laughs> yeah you mentioned that you know there there were and you mentioned that you know there there is a support system but there are also certain invisible barriers which are there like which are which become visible over a period of time uh, could you maybe elaborate on something that may you may have faced in terms of uh, uh, you know going through it or maybe the mindset mindset shift that uh, you needed to go through 
to uh, you know go further to get get further and grow f- yeah so uh, uh, you know uh, the basic difference that you feel that as you grow as you want to rise up the ladder is the emotional and the leadership style that women have so uh, uh, the main weaknesses which is actually taken as an excuse is that one you know you will not as a women you know you will not be able to keep up with the life uh, and personal life and your work balance or it it could be your you know your uh, uh demanding of the job the timelines that's that's something that you know um, uh, male employees want to take up as an excuse but with the confidence and the capability that you have you have to continue to prove them wrong so mm-hmm. every step of the way you have to have show perseverance you have to have that confidence that yes you can do it you have to take up the challenge hmm. so so yeah okay so i think uh, one thing that you brought in i'm just going to quickly touch on it is uh, uh, you know you said that there's a difference in the leadership style which which uh, sometimes workplaces do not uh, you know do not identify as a as a positive trait i would understand so uh, uh, what's what's your take on that like what what is the leadership st- but but you I mean, i mean you are you have grown uh, you know in in the career in in your career so do you think uh, you know in terms of leadership style what exactly uh, is the best way uh, to like to you know to grow as yeah so i think uh, women as they are perceived our leadership styles are definitely different because we have the understanding we work with in our own interpersonal relationships with our family we know how to deal with people how to connect how to negotiate how to work with different and diverse uh, kind of people so there is definitely a more nurturing caring and yes very very aggressive also because when you have to keep up with the timeline you have the uh, the aggression but also uh, the uh, you know the uh, adaptability that you understand that what your team or what your uh, other uh, you know uh, a team person may uh, kind of challenges that person may be facing okay. whether it's in personal life or in professional life so i think definitely our women leadership styles are more uh, you know better more inclusive I, more I, inclusive. I understand this. Yes. More, more inclusive. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I think I'm going to come to uh, Mamta. Uh, following up uh, from uh, Monica, uh, you know where she stopped. And uh, so Mamta is uh, the general counsel at Diageo India. And Mamta, over to you. Like you know your personal experience with this question and what's your take on this. I think you might find Disha that a lot of what we are going to say is somewhat repetitive because our life experience is not be different. But I think certain things are definitely going to come out. I'm going to pick it, pick that up on the second round. Probably. So what I was thinking actually is I would probably put it down to three big things, um, and I haven't experienced them as barriers, but I can see how they could be potential barriers. So I'll talk a bit about three things. I think hmm. the first one is you know often times, and I see this play out in the world today as well. um it may be a tough or demanding job or it may be a job a sales role that requires a lot of travel often times the manager is a bit concerned like monica said you know can she do the job if i hire a woman so you know should i just default to a gentleman because it might be um better assurance of getting a good performance and not having to deal with no i have children i need to go home etc etc right and i think to overcome this it's quite important for the male managers as well as actually the female uh, people who are putting their hands up for these roles to have role models so the more there are women in positions that have not been there before the more there are women in leadership positions hmm. the more managers see there are women in unconventional roles i say unconventional not because they can't do it but because it's not very common to see them in those okay. roles yeah the more it starts to feel like this is not hard others have done it hmm. probably she can do it as well and then it becomes more a competence conversation so hmm. i would say the first thing which can overcome this barrier of you know this supposed uh, 
the supposed stereotype that you know a woman perhaps has to put her family first and is not always career focused right so the way i think to overcome that is to really have more role models if you can look up i can look up and see that someone is actually doing a role that i thought was quite difficult that i feel hope that i can put my hand up for it and similarly my manager feels hope to hire in those roles as well right but connected to that of course is you also want to be joining the right organizations you don't want to be joining an organization where there isn't an effort or focus towards understanding different requirements of different genders and actually different communities as well because mm-hmm. equality of opportunity and progress isn't only about gender i mean we are today talking about gender because it's international women's day on 8th but honestly there are many communities out there who probably feel similarly to the women so it's important i think to join the right organization where true the effort is being made and so the culture is perhaps more adaptable to having women in such role mm-hmm. so that's the first mm-hmm. The second thing if I think about my life experience the all the roles that I have gotten which have been more senior uh, and this is my current role as a general counsel in uh, the Ajo India and the one before both have happened because someone sponsored me someone thought she has this potential we think she can do the role okay and okay. and it's not about and it wasn't because I had already done a similar role because that's easier in some way if you've done the role once no one has to take a chance they already know you can deliver or not right mm-hmm. so they know the decision mm-hmm. is informed mm-hmm. which means you haven't done a role like this before that someone has to take a chance and say can the potential translate into performance yeah yeah and so they have to kind of sponsor you and say i'm willing to put my professional worth behind this person and say i think she can do it right mm-hmm. i think therefore the sponsorship yeah. piece is important right sorry my dog is also excited <laughs> okay yeah. so the sponsorship piece is important but how do you get sponsors then is the immediate next question right mm. uh, i have to say most of my sponsors have been women and i think okay. it's and a large reason why they have felt more comfortable sponsoring me perhaps than uh, my male managers has been because they've been through the journey they know what it takes and they know it can be done so it's a bit of the same if you have seen it happen before you can see that it will happen again and it's easier for you to make a meritocratic decision Hmm. how have i earned sponsors i haven't gone out with a board board stand board side saying i'm willing to engage with sponsors <laughs> you know please come become a sponsor i think really this is where your work speaks for you and your personality speaks for you and your leadership hmm. speaks for you right so i always hmm. feel there are three traits that are uh, that work quite well uh, to to embody your leadership i think it's important to be authentic it's important to be who you are um and that doesn't mean you have to be you have to wield that like an axe you don't need to mm. you can be mm. smart you can be gentle you can be flexible and adaptable but you have to be who you are because firstly it's too much effort to not uh mm. second people can see through it they nobody wants to be following leaders who are fake right they want yeah. to be genuine yeah. that's when you can inspire people and motivate them the second one for me <laughs> He's very excited to hear you. <laughs> she is very excited. <laughs> she is very well that we're talking about it. Exactly. My apologies. <laughs> the second one for me is really around courage. Often times, you know, we we can be our biggest barriers. We can say to ourselves that this my potential ends here. I can't do any more. Or this job is too hard. I've not done it before. Maybe I shouldn't put my hand up for this. or oh my god i now have children i need to stay at home no one is telling us mm. there are families where people are telling us right but there are equal mm. families where people are not telling us we are telling ourselves because we are reading this mm. narrative that we have imbibed so i always feel courage is important courage to think differently courage to be open to different perspectives courage to ask questions and courage to follow your heart and do what you think will satisfy you right so that's the second one for me the third thing i will say is excellence you've got to be very very good at what you do uh, nobody becomes really senior or nobody becomes really successful without being really good i mean they're not perfect human mm. but they're good at what they do right so you have to be good at what you're doing and i think connected to that is you have to have a real drive to push yourself and to raise mm. the bar for yourself all the time so that's the only way you keep up with the world it's dynamic it's changing but you not only have to do that for yourself but also i think for the people around you so i would say the mm. this is the second one for me right how do you get sponsors what kind of a person you are how you come across the last one i'll say is allies and you just cannot underestimate the importance of allies whether it is at work yeah. or it's at home 
So if I think about myself, you know, we are always saying work-life balance. What is work well? Work-life balance? There isn't any, to be honest. It has taken me a while to come to this conclusion, but frankly, someone once said it to me and said, "Work-life integration is perhaps the way you want to talk about it and think about it." Right? Mm-hmm. How can you integrate both in a way that it allows you to manage your work, but also manage your life effectively? And that integration, uh, that integration tapestry will look very different for different people. The way I do mm-hmm. it will look very different from what you will do, Isha, or from what Norma or Parishte will do, right? So there is no one equation that works for everyone. The thing I think that's important to remember is, you know, we we should be kind to ourselves. We are trying to do a lot, and oftentimes we are trying to do a lot in a world that we may not have as much support as we would like at home or even at work. It's not really a level playing field, right? So I think be kind to yourself. Treat yourself mm-hmm. like you would your best friend, and you sometimes you'll drop the ball at work. You should be smart enough to realize that you should drop the ball on things that are not critical. That's important. Sometimes you'll drop the ball at home. Again, you should be smart enough to realize that you're dropping the ball on something that's not critical. It's okay to order pizza one day and not have a home cooked meal. It's probably not okay to miss uh, to miss something that's important to your child where your child wants your presence. So you will have to balance it. But honestly, be kind to yourself. And I think in that zone, I'll also say, just as I have succeeded with because of allies and sponsors, I think I have a duty to be an ally and to sponsor people. So that's important to hmm. me, and I must make sure, therefore, that I can not only encourage people but also find them opportunities. Let me stop. My dog is barking. All right. I think uh, I'll come back to Mamta uh, in a bit, but a uh, couple of very good points, uh, and I absolutely agree with you. I think the term work-life balance is a misnomer. Work-life integration is a better term, given the fact that you know uh, uh, one has to. Like we are in the professional field, so we are there because you know one is there because they want to grow forward. There is no other way. I mean, you are in the professional field because you want to excel, and one has to take everything together in a way that it integrates for you, not and it. And that's something that I think as a principle. works it could be different on a case to case basis but as a principle it stands for everyone to implement in you know in the manner that they want to um i think uh, so i'm going to come to uh, uh, manorma next and uh, so manorma is the director of financial crime and compliance at capgemini india and uh, i want to come to manorma and ask you your take uh, on this question manorma like what were the barriers that you faced and how has your journey been Uh, Manorma, I would request uh, your audio is. Uh, yeah. Oh, is it any yeah, better yeah. now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, thanks. I think I was saying that Mamta covered most of it. Then we could go go <laughs> for coffee now. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So I think um, my perspective, um, Monica shared a little bit about it. Is um, unless it gets into your brain about the barrier, uh, you know, it is not there. right so i think it's a conscious effort to not have the barrier in your brain right especially when you move from a middle management to the senior management level uh, it takes a lot of effort and intended changes uh, with one self as a leader in any of the organization right to ensure that these barriers don't get into your mind and uh, lose a focus of what you want to be and where you want to be right in a long run mm-hmm. uh that's my first comment with regard to my uh, experience uh, in terms of uh, barriers i think um, i would want to really comment in a very different way because um, the numbers at the board level speaks whether we have a barriers or not so let let's yeah. leave the comment there right uh, i'm not talking about uh, uh, you know middle managers and and uh, the diversity bunch of people whom we hire but i think at a board level uh, we can do better uh, i from a, for more decision making roles and also ensuring that these decision making roles go to the next level of managing the entire business capacity in any of the organization or any of the institution right uh there is no question about the competency we spoke briefly yesterday as well right that was a very mm. interesting discussion what we had uh, competency and you know capability discussion i think we have overcome it through the years um there is no question once anyone need to ask about you know why women are not there in board uh, etc but what i really see 
and this is my personal experiences i think there's a laser lens when it comes to women leaders moving up to the you know board you see there is additional pressure of showcasing that uh, capability and competency the minute you have four nominees and one is a woman i think there's always a focus like on that one nomination mm. and then there's a lot yeah. of pressure right i think that is yeah. my uh, you know entire experience and i wonder you know it's very interesting to see it's also mix of culture and also a natural upbringing of a leader to the board boardrooms right so that natural evolving evol- evolution is not happening yet right and that is very disappointing mm. for me today that you know uh, it will take uh, time for us to get to the very natural evaluation where you know women are naturally in the board system and not reduced with the numbers and not circumstanced with the additional you know scrutiny and additional skill set mm. and competencies etc i think that is a greater uh, greatest uh, you know pressure i think one go through when you are moving up the ladder um uh, i think the other things i think is creating your own set of board of directors i think mamta spoke about it monica spoke about it about the allies and people who can talk for your work right yesterday i was talking that you know let your work speak right um mm. make yourself indispensable with the knowledge what you have today right um, mm. nothing can beat the knowledge and uh, the the attitude towards what you want to have in a very right way right challenge mm. the status quo in a right way to bring a change mm. in system, what it takes to get the right business results there is no no problem in that uh, there should not be any problem right if you have a right ceos and right stakeholders in the board uh, i don't think so anyone will have any problem in bringing any of the uh, you know issues in the board and spoken about it and then getting resolved it ideally i think this is a couple of things which i see can be uh, you know modified when you grow up in the ladder and that's my experience as well when you try to put your hand in change management i think you're challenging the entire status quo right and it's very sensitive and it's very sensitive when you say challenge then you're kind of also touching the beliefs of the other people you know what i'm saying and they're all human beings you know right way yes. um while you're not negating their belief it takes a lot of energy for you to say that this intended change is going to believe a lot of positive results right i yeah. think that is that is a lot of energy that is a lot and especially when a woman in the board i think it takes that extra coffee for you to put it in a mug and say them and make your listings and present into present uh, to the board room that you mean business you really want to see things moving because mm. here is what it is right and shaking mm. that takes a lot of energy which should not be a case you know what i'm saying that yeah. should not be it should be very natural evaluation why should you really want to you know tell people hear me out i'm right you know what i'm saying okay. Okay. yeah you are right because you are tired right so that i think those are the changes uh, i think uh, really really which i went through when i went, went up the ladder i think what really helped me to come over is your stakeholders and your people who are your cheerleaders for each other as much as possible um you know um, i put up my hand and support uh, many many young aspiring women as well so do i get the support from people i call them my board of directors my hr people uh, people who work with me my son himself sometimes you know he do understand if his studies gets a little you know uh, mamta was saying you know sometimes we suck at both right working and being a good mom or uh, good daughter good uh, sister or good um, you know a neighbor sometimes family right? person yeah. So yeah 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 and it's absolutely fun. Uh, to be vulnerable to be who you are i think uh, taking away that lens is very important right don't mm. scrutinize too much <laughs> for who we are it's it's absolutely you know guys leave it alone right yeah correct correct so i think uh, uh, you know i'm going to uh, uh, i'll move on to the other uh, 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 panelists but my one question to uh, you know all of you uh, again would be coming back would be as to like you know you spoke a very good point about how the culture and the natural evolution is very important for women to be ident- to be accepted uh, you know uh, included as a leader even if they are at a leadership position so what's your take on the diversity and the initiative inclusions that are uh, you know diversity and inclusion initiative sorry the dni initiatives that you know organizations are very much into these days and that's the talk of the town uh, companies are putting in lot of effort into that uh, so 
does that really like you know do make any change how is it happening like what is your take on it i'm going to come back on that uh, though uh, but i'm going to move on to ferishte so ferishte the setna is a founder and managing partner at dmd advocates mumbai and ferishte coming to you uh, you know uh, again so people uh, all three other lawyers have shared their own experience but i uh, i want to listen from you like you know what has been your take on the barriers or if there was any barrier per se well uh, thank you isha uh, let me start by saying that uh, all of my three colleagues have been part of the corporate ladder okay i think uh, therein lies that very fundamental distinction between what it is that they will encounter necessarily as against what we who are hardcore litigators practitioners in courts of law hmm. and negotiating for clients in the boardroom and outside Uh, of uh, multiple different sort of arenas we we clearly come from i think a very very distinct experience i have i have to start with saying that um okay. obviously uh at the time when i entered the profession there was really none of that pecking order that you see in law firms today where you know everybody wants to get that new position and all of that Hmm. For us, you know, we were the peon, the filing clerk, the you know, stenographer. We did everything from you know, you know, from scratch, whether it was photocopying or whatever it was. So, frankly, if you were prepared to participate and lift that burden, as it were, whether it was the peon's burden or my senior partner, who I was ultimately interning with at that point in time, you know, you were part of the team. It was just a given. Hmm. and if you had a supporting senior and when i say uh, senior i mean in the form of the person that you effectively first work with i think that that is that critical person who shapes your future if that senior permits you the luxuries and indulgences of what would effectively be freedom of thought and speech as it were and expression i think frankly you don't need to turn back after that because you know if you've been given that degree of liberty if you like hmm. you can effectively go through the rest of your professional years knowing fully well what it is that was inculcated in you at that very initial stage in the profession and therefore i come from the space where i was given that freedom i was uh, inculcated a spirit of independence i have to say that i come from a background where my grandmother back in the 30s and 40s was a working woman so i am really in that sense from a family where my mother is a lawyer she is still a lawyer she's part of the law firm so there was a clear direction finder if you like I, and and therefore it was you know is the legal profession really a male bastion do i really know that i did not know that existed I was thoroughly oblivious to, and I remain oblivious to anyone who says that. Yes, of course, there may be uh, 98 lawyers in the courtroom who are male, dressed in a certain way, and then there are two women there. What does that matter? Never matter to the judge. It never matter to the client. So who is it mattering to? I frankly don't understand the concepts of the gender issue, if you like, from the legal profession, because. Let's not forget that the Constitution tells us that we are all equal before the law. Absolutely, yeah. And for any lawyer to believe that we are not, I think, would be an absolute anathema. Hmm. For any lawyer to think that we need to be talking about, uh, you know, ensuring that in the courtroom, I'm, I'm not talking about a corporate space now, because that that is completely a different. uh zone and and obviously i have not been there and and i have to tell you that i i know very little about it um and the reality is that in the area of work that we do it is as as all of my three colleagues before me uh, spoke to it is all about your work speaking for itself i believe mamta said that um, Uh, Manorama said that Monica said that and I'm quite sure even Akanta after me is going to say that and I'm sure you Isha would say the same thing. Mm, definitely. So so where I come from I think firstly invisible barrier of your own making in your own head get rid of it mm. life is simple. Okay. 
to the extent that you think someone may be conspiring against you because you're a woman i frankly think you need to find a way to deal with it and and the fact is that to the extent that there will be 98 lawyers in the courtroom who are male or maybe 99 if there is a judge who's listening to you it really doesn't matter and why is the judge listening to you the judge is listening to you because you have something to say and guess what you may actually be pre- better prepared than the next person hmm. so if you are that's what your client wants to see anyway okay. so i don't think uh, one should permit hurdles and barriers which were perhaps a thing of the past in so far as concerns the legal profession i i'm not saying it was never there but i have to say that my experience is i have not experienced it and i would strongly encourage all young aspiring lawyers who intend to get to courts of law and and make that their uh forte to to effectively be in court and to you know get what needs get done in the court stay to know that if you can do what you do best in the courtroom nobody and nothing can come in your way because it's you and the judge there's nobody else in between either you get your point across or you don't and you may not be able to get it across for a variety of reasons but it's certainly nothing to do with the fact that you were a woman all right i think uh, that's very that's a uh, you know it's a very fair point uh, finished and i think i'm uh, i think what the co- two common points that i have understood is coming out of this discussion till now is two things one is the importance of having allies like you know in terms of knowing and having uh and 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 making sure like you know make a uh, being very objective about knowing more and more people more and more women uh you know who have taken up leadership roles either in your family or in the profession or anybody else that you know of like you know that experience uh, uh counts like when you know that then you are then those barriers that you know are traditionally there that one level one step you grow further and i think the second step would be to get over your own narrative like get over your own uh, barrier about okay am i facing this barrier because uh, i'm a woman or because there is something like you know i need to do better at the work or i need to be i need to do uh, you know in terms of the work that is being asked of me should i do something more should i take more leadership uh, initiative it's basically about the own barriers that one needs to get over so coming uh, to akanksha uh, akanksha is uh, Uh, the is a lawyer and she is a business development and digital marketing specialist at Tri Legal. So, uh, Akanksha, coming to you, uh, you know, we have heard four people, uh, I mean, four uh, lawyers speaking before you, and a uh, couple of common pointers have come up. But what's your take uh, on this topic from your perspective? I think they all have already covered what I had in mind. So, my experience is a mixed bag. I am a lawyer as you've just mentioned and creating my niche in business development side of Correct. law. So Correct. so this is all entirely new and I had literally no one to look up to in the legal hmm. uh, you know profession segment. totally yeah. So so this is something that I created on my own to the uh so that is one side of an uh that is one side of it and i think that leadership as we were just talking about it's not uh, not that you can be a leader in in your workspace and not in your personal uh, sphere so talking about that that i also became a parent during a pandemic in in both these scenarios in my work sphere and in my professional front there was just no blueprint available to me so yeah so we had to create everything in my so there were a lot of negotiations in my personal uh, front and at work and uh, uh, like uh, mamta and everyone said that you need to have a lot of allies and support system to help you reach where you want to and definitely like like how ferishte mentioned that you need to uh, you know dissect stories from fact you cannot keep coming back to that oh i am a woman so probably this is happening to me because i am a woman and it's gender specific issue i don't buy that point you need to dissect both the things 
and uh, uh, what else yeah so about the challenges i think farishte i completely agree with her that she mentioned that you know you need to break those barriers initially i thought it solved societal pressure when you know when the pandemic hit us and i had to manage my kid so so i thought that you know the society wants me to be the the prime caregiver and then in then mm-hmm. eventually i realized it's it's just me i just want to be that good girl you know i want to carry that image and that that made me struggle a lot eventually i could realize and you know i started accepting help i think it's a tendency with us that we do not want to delegate work or it's just <laughs> me probably <laughs> that so i think that's also a learning uh, from the situation and from my experience so far of course i have a long way to go and the, other than that of, on the work life choices i think very initially in my career someone very senior to me told me that life is all encompassing you cannot segregate or have it in compartments that you know this is work and this is life it's all encompassing you you have to make choices in between sometimes uh, work will take the upper hand sometimes it's the other way around so i think yeah it's uh, part and parcel was, and i'm yeah. No, sorry, sorry. I had a once very specific question for you. You know, you are a lawyer who transitioned into a very new role, which is uh, which is not something that traditionally lawyers take up. That's also like you know moving to a different role altogether. So, uh, any uh, like how that shift that you made, right? Uh, that is also a uh, that that shift. How was that for you in terms of uh, moving? so so i'll tell you asha there have been a lot of uh, lot of first times in my life i'm uh, i'm a first time a first generation lawyer i come from a tier 2 uh, city where lot not many women go out from that uh, you know from that geography they not allowed to go out and this is where i think farishte and i kind of disagree i see that you know you need to be someone people look up to you need to create that you need to pave the way for others to uh, mm. you know find their passion explore that there's so much more other than the typical stereotypical roles that society has defined for you and of course then then i transition to the bd side of the law and initially i used to get raised eyebrows even from my colleague i had a short stint at uh, uh, litigation and then i Uh, shifted to the bd and digital marketing side of law i was heading uh, the corp com at phoenix legal and then i transitioned to tri legal so very interesting journey and uh, of course i had no one but uh, no one to look up to but i definitely had a lot of support system had that not been the case probably i wouldn't be here sitting talking to you all and you know understanding different perspectives so it's not just hmm. me i think it takes entire village uh, you know to pre- to break that invisible barrier that you have in your head so yeah that that makes a lot of sense uh, i think we are almost near time so uh, i think one common point that is coming across uh, to me is the need to have a allies at work whichever prof- i mean whichever part of the legal profession that you are at be it at law firm be it at a litigation be it litigation be it at at a corporate level and the second thing is the need of and not the need but the requirement of mentorship like you know it, it takes up uh, and i'm not talking about at the family level but at the work level the mentors and the allies at the work level that needs to be built so i'm going to uh, so i uh, so i want to ask each one of you you know some uh, tip to people who are listening to us the audience who is listening to to us as to how do you build that like what is the one thing that you will say that if somebody is growing in their career how do you build that uh, system and uh, i'll start with mamta here so uh, uh, mamta any any uh, uh, closing tip for our audience here on this no i'm going to repeat what i said already which is be yourself and it does not need to be compromised whoever you are is good enough to succeed uh the second thing i'll say is integrity is important we are in a world where um anything you say or do is going to be available for all near eternity nothing gets wiped off of 
uh, twitter or linkedin it appears and it's almost impossible to wipe it off <laughs> despite your best effort so i would say you know be yourself but show integrity in all times and not that you are making it up but that that is the person you are right and absolutely always choose to challenge yourself yeah i mean that's the theme for today, for this this year's international women's day also that choose to challenge and choose to challenge whatever uh, you know whatever whatever barrier like could be anything that you know that that is there for your own self uh, monica coming to you on this uh, allies and mentorship uh, monica your audio is off just sorry closing remarks on this so i was just saying that mamta said it all so it's your integrity and it's it's how your confidence build up everything put together i think these are the closing lines from my all right all right manorma if i understood right you were actually seeking as to you know how do you find your mentor or allies is, is that what mentor and allies that- like how do you build that uh, uh, because you know it's it's sometimes difficult for uh, uh, and i'm not just saying for women for every for anybody like you know it's difficult to know uh, uh, how to go about this so any tip there in terms right. of right i think uh, it's during the course of the time yeah i don't think so it is the relationship the working relationship or even a personal relationship always takes time isn't it um, yeah. and it's it's typically built on all the qualities what everyone mentioned here so i think one aspect which i which really worked well with me is trust and honesty right um with my mentor um it's it's a, always been trust and straightforward approach and being very honest in my approach right whether i go to him or her with the um, you know specific questions whether it's personal or profession um i give somebody said don't be fake right that's absolutely fantastic uh, you know you have to be yourself uh, for a mentor to guide you be able to understand you and also to be able to you know relate to the problem or to guide you to the next level right i think two words from my end to sum up right one is a trusted and honest relationship is what it takes to uh, you know get a very good allies and mentors yeah all right finish the integrity mamta said it yeah monica said it manorama said it If all of all of it is, it is it is the singular quotient there is there is nothing short of that that can work for you in this profession and i don't think that is true of uh, a lot of other professions but it's certainly true of the legal profession because if you lack that level of integrity the client is not going to be able to trust you the judge is not going to be able to trust you your colleagues Absolutely. are not going to be able to trust you and certainly your seniors will not trust you so when i say your colleagues i mean your peers but obviously there hmm. is no one that is going to be able to trust what you say or do so if you are a slippery customer the legal profession is not for you for my so integrity i think would be the underlying factor here akanksha uh, what's your closing remarks on this i think coming from my experience i think you keep exploring and don't you know segregate your work life from your life you need to you know understand yourself better and reach out there are so many people who are going to help you understand it's it's your career is going to be it's a marathon actually so the better and the earlier you understand yourself better and you know curate your environment accordingly including your work environment the better it's going to be and don't google stuff when you're asking <laughs> when you're reaching out to mentor <laughs> ask specific questions and follow up yeah yeah i think that's where that's where being true and honest uh matters like you know if you actually are seeking a mentorship then you have to be to do and honest about yourself and what exactly are you you know seeking from the mentor who you want some some sort of guidance from i think that's that's very important i think we are almost yeah we are we are at time a uh, very very uh, uh you know enlightening discussion i had a couple of more questions but i think there is uh the time has passed for and there's another uh, conversation that's going to start soon but thank you everyone for joining us it has been a great experience listening to your uh listening to your uh, experiences and i hope the audience also has uh, gained a lot of perspective on this uh over to you uh, bw team